this damn game forcing its bibble on me. It has turned into two hours and it's about to be more. This game somehow like keeps having new stuff to show me. I wish I could see how long it is, but I don't think there's a how long to beat for this. That's the trouble with playing unreleased trash. There's no documentation. Apparently we meet again. It seems so. This castle's different than I remember it. It's chaos. It'd be different sometimes. You can never trust your memories. Oh, well, I'll do my best. Good luck. Bye. I don't remember what these do, but I'm gonna put them on. Because this game isn't exploration heavy and because I have like, because I have some stuff that would ordinarily be considered like end game gear. I have designs on like, oh, what if, what if the game is like way shortened and I can actually finish it in one sitting? I would look it up and see if that's a possibility, but I think the number of people who have actually played this to completion number in the double digits at most. And I'm not certain there's a great deal of, uh, I'm not sure there's a great deal of documentation on what you can uh, expect. Oh, we are playing the unreleased tigergame.com version of Symphony of the Night which is not a hack and is not unofficial. Well, it's technically unofficial because it was never released, but like it was legitimately being worked on for a release. And got axed probably because it sucked. But it was unearthed recently. Someone got their hands on an actual like working cart of it. Oh, there we go. And they put it out in the world and they were like, yo, did you guys know this was a thing? <gasps> Most of us, it turns out, did not. And so we learned. That is the actual 
first like loose in castle upgrade I have found the whole game. That's actually kind of wild. You've ever played Symphony of the Night? Those things are littered. They are everywhere in the castle. You trip over like HP and MP and heart maximum ups. Gotta get up here and get this, this protein, <laughs> this protein shake, shaker. My G Fuel cup. That sounds good. Is it good? Probably not better than, oh, well, it's probably actually a lot better than a la carte mail. Yeah, that's a significant improvement. Delightful. So, would this be an upgrade as well? No, it's just a regular heart, as most of them have been. Hi, Ellipsis! What's the problem? It's Symphony of the Night. Clearly, like, look! You see the run cycle? You see the flowing locks? Look, I transform into a bat! I don't see the problem. Everyone's being all weird about it. <laughs> we have Symphony of the Night at home. Exactly. No, that's literally not the button. It's like y'all have never seen a game com before. I've actually never seen a game com before. That's a dagger and I don't want it. A falchion? Where the hell is it? Oh, I went right by it. Well, number go down. Ellipsis, here's the thing. It sucks, as you would expect a Gamecom port of Symphony of the Night to be. However, in its own fucked up way, it's really impressive. Like, it's like, it's got the, it's got the walking animation. It's got a couple of tracks of music. The platforming and the hitboxes are wonky, but it, the castle is here. 
There is a save room. You save with passwords. Okay, here's the thing. Like... This, in a... In a sense, this is official. This was made in 1997 for release officially for the Gamecom. It was canceled for reasons that, excuse me, I just, I don't need to do that. It was canceled for reasons that are apparent upon playing. I feel like I've backtracked to, like, the actual literal beginning of the game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have. Though, in a way, that could be manageable. So what I've been saying is, like, when you think about a handheld port of a game like this, what you would probably think of is like, oh, they made some shitty platformer to tie in with the main game that's that isn't anything like the game that is its namesake. And admittedly, a lot of the exploration elements of this game are stripped out. Um, it seems to be a lot more linear. There are some powers that are just not in it. Um, it literally plays like this music through the entire game. But it has the whole, like, what is a man? You don't belong in this world. The whole prologue is in there. It's not spoken, obviously, but... They were really trying to make this a faithful shot-for-shot, one-to-one port of actual for real symphony of the night and the the absolute gall of their attempts to make that happen and the fact that they are like closer to succeeding than they have every any right to be is stunning Now, I want to be careful because I have some things to praise it for, but you have to understand that the praise is all in the, like... You have to under understand that the praise is all packaged within it's bad and not good to play. But yeah, why is this a thing? And why is it this close to being the actual thing it's supposed to be? Is, um... Like... Huh. Like, it's slow, the hitboxes are bad, the entire game grinds to a halt when it needs to play a sound effect. Like, it's chock full of problems. Sometimes you get hit by things that died. Okay. 
Sometimes your attack animations look like this. But it's all here. The castle's here, the sub weapons are here. <coughs> The backdash isn't here. Hold on, my memories are being... My memories of this game are... are, are being played around with it. I, like, I, I... There's cutscenes! The Belmont Clan? I'm very familiar with the Belmont Chelan. Okay, if this were original Symphony of the Night, where would we go after that cutscene? Hi, Cell! This isn't a demake! This is an official, albeit unreleased, port of Symphony of the Night from the late 90s to the TigerElectronicsGame.com. Shit! Look, here's the map. You can't tell me it's not real. We got levels and shit. Holy glasses. I don't remember picking those up. I see they wouldn't really have helped. The weird thing about Symphony of the Night is that it still holds up really well and is still really good. But for being like the one of the granddaddies of the genre, it's um I, I, I don't want to say it doesn't hold up well, but there are contemporaries of the game that have, including some of Igarashi's own work, that have pulled off the concept better. Hey, Jolly, uh, you are, you're part right. This is not the Game Boy, though that's a solid guess. This is the Tiger Gamecom. And it is an it is an official unreleased but official 
port of the game that was pretty much fully made in the late 90s and then never released and only discovered a few months ago. In fact, since we have a safe state in here, in the event that... For those of you who are just joining and haven't seen yet... I will reload it just so you can see this, just so you can see this glorious, beautiful UI. I really like the Sorrow games. Uh, Portrait of Ruin is fine. Although it's kind of sad that it's only remembered for Charlotte Jonathan, Charlotte Jonathan. Um, I didn't love the map design in Portrait of Ruin. Order of Ecclesia is underappreciated. Anyhow. You can't say it's not real. It's staring you right in the face. I'll hit new game. I'm going to reload the state, but just just for those of you joining. They're really going for it. I mean, you're not even wrong. The graphics are reminiscent of an old graphing calculator. And I mean, frankly, this is from the late eight, the, like, sorry, the late nineties. So yeah, that's about the level of, that's about the level that we're looking at. You don't get to do the Dracula fight, by the way. It just happens at a cutscene. And now there's this, which you can sort of vaguely tell is a castle. And then it gives you a bunch of text, which we're going to skip. I know, right? It's okay, though, because you can still hear it. Uh, that's bullshit that that elevator's not real, by the way. Just like to express my discontent with this. So, th again, this doesn't mean much coming from me because, you know, my... You're all, I assume, well familiar with my unreasonably high level of patience for bad games. But I really did not intend to play this for the whole stream. I had other stuff I was going to do.
But then the experience turned out to be like more positive than I expected. So now here we are. And now I'm like, okay, how much of this game is in here and how long would it take for me to actually clear it? Anyway, about Symphony of the Night, my experience with Symphony of the Night is like overwhelmingly positive, but the only reason I say that some of its contemporaries have done its formula better, is just, that's just a natural thing that happens. You know, like, it's still a PS1 game. There are advances in technology that have made things smoother, that have made things easier. Combat for sure is one of the most obvious areas where it improves. Yeah, we can't get up there. Yeah, I think that's fair. Very true, very fair. I'm kind of stuck on where to go. I don't remember my, uh, I don't remember my, my pathing. I think as overall experiences, some of Igarashi's later games, despite being relegated to handhelds, um, have, uh, in, in particular, the, oh God. In particular, um, the whole like soul stealing gathering system. from uh, the Sorrow games. And that is, like that is a, that is a development of what is started in this game that I think is a, that I think is a clear improvement overall. Now is the castle in Aria of Sorrow as detailed and interesting as symphonies? Debatable. But as an overall gameplay experience, I, uh, I prefer it. Yeah! I just want to make sure that we're clear that I am not disparaging Symphony of the Night or saying it sucks. I'm just saying I don't necessarily believe that it would be like required reading for any fan of the genre. Like I wouldn't tell someone like if you want to know historically where a lot of the a lot of Metroidvanias like are pulling from. Yeah, absolutely. But 
but I wouldn't dare to call this like here and now even still the be all end all of the genre. There are plenty of games that have that have executed this concept at least as well, if only because they've had oh god. If only because they've had time to iterate on the formula. Like, games should get better over time. Because when when a game like Symphony of the Night comes out and completely... completely shakes up the formula, it should give creative people a whole new set of ideas to work with. Like, it should be that you come out from that and you're like, oh shit! Oh yeah, we could do that! And then you go from there and you're like, hey, so they did this, so why don't we do it th this other way? Like, we can do something like that. That'd be, that'd be dope. And everyone puts their own little sauce into it, and some of them suck. And some of them don't. Some of them push the concept forward. In really cool ways. Some of them do the concept exactly the same, but have 20 years worth of uh, improved technology to work with. It did, and it's frustrating. It's the same thing, like... I feel like nobody copied Super Metroid's, uh... formula. Like, in the strictest sense, until, like, Axiom Verge. And that took, like... That took, like, an obscene amount of time before people were like, Hey, do you think someone would want to play, like, an homage to Super Metroid? That just feels like playing Super Metroid again? Oh my god, you're not gonna let me not take the axe. Ah! Hey look, there's a toaster. Oh, that's right, it's a pot roast. Oh, I'll be honest with you, I haven't played Axiom Verge either, but I know that it's a Metroid Prime, or a, a Met Super Metroid clone. And I remember that the prevailing... The prevailing thing everyone was saying about it when it came out was, wow, this is really just Super Metroid, isn't it? Why hasn't everyone done this? The really sad thing is today you have a really toxic version of that, which is, oh, this game made a lot of money. Copy it. And that's how you get like, that's how you get trends. Everything's a gritty, realistic, military first-person shooter, and then everything's a... And then everything's a... a colorful, team-based hero shooter. Everything's a... Everything's got loot boxes. Everything's got... Uh, everything's a battle royale. And it's because one thing made a thing that was somewhat unique and had some mechanics that people t latched onto. And then within three years, 
that's all anyone's making because they all want to cash in on that. Meanwhile, it took people like 25 years to realize that, hey, exploration with cool space person is a, is a winning formula. So to what you were saying, Ellipsis, that's where you get like, we're fans of that old thing and want to pay and want to make an homage to it. Arguably, like, also the case with, like, Shovel Knight and NES platformers. I would argue that, like, Shovel Knight is not so subtly a uh, an homage to DuckTales. So anyway, um, that item's a thing. <laughs> 